I mean, what do you guys honestly want me to say? Yeah, it's another post-game instant reaction video from my phone. I'm not going to boot everything up. This is the same thing as last week. And this, this might continue until Miami finally decides to take care of business again. This one, this one hurts not as much as the Georgia Tech game. I'm going to be honest, this game doesn't hurt as much as the Georgia Tech game for me personally. Uh, but that's a personal thing for Coop because I went into this game expecting a loss. Miami fans ate me alive for this one. I thought it'd be 34-31 North Carolina. It ended up being 41-31 North Carolina. I hit the Miami score on the head for the third time this season. I don't say that to brag. I'm just saying. But even if I predict the loss, let me get it. Let me let me stand up. It doesn't feel good ever to be right about predicting losses. That's why I'm always in such a tough position because I spent more than half of that stream for that game explaining to Canes fans how the how so many of them or so many of you, I'm sorry, I'm just saying, I know this sucks. So many of you set your realistic expectations too high for this team this year. So, uh, so many people said, well, Coop, you expected a loss. Why are you mad? Because it still sucks to lose. And people said, well, Coop, you said you tapered your expectations. So why are you still mad? Because it still sucks to lose. I hate watching this Miami team not beat anybody. I hate being the laughing stock of the college football world. It's not fun no matter what. I'd like to be pleasantly surprised sometimes, but it just never seems to work out that way. But I'm telling you the issue partially is that Canes fans, so many, set their realistic expectations super high. You got to remember, I'm, t I'm trying to give you advice, right? Like I, I personally did this for my own mental health. So my approach this season was cautiously optimistic, lower my realistic expectations, but then my fan expectations can still remain through the roof. Hold Mario Cristobal accountable, this coaching staff, and all these players. But I already, I've showed it a, a million times. Seven and five is what I had predicted. And like I said, who even knows still what's going to happen? There's a lot of football left. However, I'm telling you, for the rest of this season, if you want a, a tip from Coop, for your sake... Lower your realistic expectations a little bit, and you'll thank me later, I promise you. Now, let's talk about this specific game here for a moment. Mac Brown has never lost to the Miami Hurricanes. North Carolina has won, I believe, now five in a row. Tyler Van Dyke is not that guy. Look, I know this is going to be, it's not going to be controversial because there's going to be a lot of people that agree with me and a lot of people that don't agree with me. It doesn't all fall on TVD's shoulders. I'm not trying to say that. However, I want you guys to tell me who is that guy on this team? I'm not even talking about quarterback position. Who is that guy? Okay, well, we hype up Cam. Cam's names are in the rafters. Well, he bit on that play last week against Georgia Tech. Again, does it all fall on his shoulders? Absolutely not. But where are those guys that week in and week out are making the, the big plays, the ESPN top 10 type of plays, the guy that comes in there every game and makes an impact, somebody that on offense or defense this team can look to? Because North Carolina has a guy, his name's Drake May. That dude's a baller. He shows up week in and week out. And the problem with TVD, in my opinion, is that we've seen flashes, but he's too up and down. There were guys open. There were guys open this week. There were guys open last week. He's not getting. They're not getting that much pressure on him. Going into last week, or maybe even this week, Tyler Van Dyke had only been psyched, sacked like three times. May had been sacked 11, and he got sacked four, or five, or six times tonight. And he still finds a way to be that guy. So I don't know, man. Our run game is not explosive at all. 
Uh, I mean, you know, we, we can chip away, but it's it's just it's not super explosive. Where where are the big, you know, 30, 40, 50 yard runs, the big time touchdowns? They're not there. Ball security fumbling is still an issue. Tyler Van Dyke staring down wide receivers. It's easy. You, the, when the linebacker picked off that one pass in this game, in the North Carolina game, all you had to do was sit back and just watch Tyler Van Dyke's eyes because they only looked in one spot every time, the whole time. I'm overreacting a little bit, but I'm just saying. It's instant reaction. It's it's heat of the moment. It's such a combination of things, man. It's It's year two for Mario Cristobal, and I'm not making excuses. This is reality. It's year two under Mario Cristobal with a new OC and new DC, uh, several transfer players, some young players, and, you know, again, some Canes fans not being real with their expectations and their predictions. With that being said, in today's times, you're not going to get patience, especially from Miami fans. Um, with the transfer portal, uh, after 20 years of sucking, People are tired of waiting. So Mario is going to have 20 years of sucking and expectations thrown on top of him. It's, it's, it's part of taking the job at Miami. It just is. It's, it's part of it. I think it's also a combination of some teams figuring us out at this point, right? Like we're, we're at times we are getting out coached. That definitely happened in this North Carolina game because I think we have the athletes or had the athletes rather to hang with them, but we're getting out coached at times. Teams are making adjustments. They figured out what we're doing offensively and defensively, and they're making it look easy out there. Honestly, they are. And we're seeing this Miami team really starting to struggle in the second half of ball games. The wheels just completely fall off because we were hanging with North Carolina in the first half. Second half, forget it. Forget it. And some of it is the defense being tired because the offense hasn't been holding up their end of the deal. But again, it's not just that. There's too many things. Can we be honest? There's too many things. Now, if you're sitting around, I'm going to go ahead and let you know. If you're sitting around waiting for me to smash the keyboard like last week and throw things, that's not going to happen. Because again, I expected a loss in this one. It still hurts, but I expected a loss. The Georgia Tech game hurt me way more. And don't come in here in this comment section and say, Coop, they would have won this week against North Carolina if they wouldn't have lost against Georgia Tech last week. It was hangover from that game, and that's exactly what it was. How many times are we going to say that? How many times are we going to say the Georgia Tech loss was because uh, the team was looking past them, looking at North Carolina? How many times are we going to say that? How many times? Because if, if that's the issue, then we're going to have to see some changes then. If players are consistently doing that still, well, Coop, uh, Tyler Van Dyke's staring down, guys, and only throwing to Restrepo because he's the only guy that's open. Then we're going to need to make some changes, either with Tyler Van Dyke or the receivers, because this can't keep happening. We'll have to see some changes then somewhere, somehow. I don't know. I don't know what the answers are. Said so I'm just as confused as, as many of the rest of you. This is the second week in a row that uh, I've opened my door after the stream. And my wife's standing there holding fresh baked cookies because she knows just how destroyed I am. Trying to cheer me up. Being a Miami Hurricanes fan is, is torture. Honestly, it is. I, I'm not superstitious. We talk about this all the time, but I'm starting to think that truly Miami is cursed. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm really starting to feel that way. I am. I cannot believe, I'm going to look at the stats here. We're, we're not going super professional mode for this. We gave up 235 rushing yards to North Carolina. We were giving up an average of 58 rushing yards per game coming into this one. The big worry was Drake May and his passing. We passed for 391. They passed, they, they passed for 273. Where's the consistency? They were back to being consistently inconsistent. And I'm telling you that a lot of it still is that we played a good Mac team. Bro, stop hyping them up. Miami of Ohio is a good Mac team. Shouldn't be in the same conversation with Miami, period. And we took care of business, but the point is it was a Mac team. We beat a decent Texas A&M team that hung with Alabama and hung with Tennessee. I know they didn't get it done, but they're a decent team. The team got up for that one. I've said this time and time again. 
Coop, what happened? It doesn't make sense. The team got up for that one. They also bought the hype, which is good. You want your team to do that. You want the buy-in. But they bought into the hype. There were some glaring issues in that game, but Miami overcame the adversity and they won. We beat a bad Temple team. Temple's just whatever. You know, Coop, but to me, no, it's Temple. Stop. We beat Bethune, the high school team. Now Miami is facing stiffer competition week in and week out. We're in conference play. Welcome to the ACC. And we now start out 0-2. So what we're doing is we're starting to see that there's no, this team isn't starting to fall off. I don't think that we're seeing a different team. This is the same team. Teams have figured us out. We're getting out coached. And we're seeing what this team actually really has been this whole time. And that is a seven or maybe if we pray hard enough and we're lucky and the football gods smile upon us, an eight-win team. Seven or eight-win team. And that's where we've been the whole time. Just people want to be hyped. And I don't blame you. I've tried to tell people that. I understand you wanting to buy in. You want to be able to talk trash. I do too. So I'm not, I, that's why I said I'm not the person that says, I told y'all, look, look, I had it down as a loss oh, back in August. Hey, I, look, hey, Canes fans, hey, yo, give me some credit. I told y'all, I told you we weren't going to win this game. It doesn't feel good. I want to believe like a lot of you. But I told you I have to see it to believe it. And we're seeing what this team really is at this point in time. It was year five, Mac Brown, versus year two, Mario. And as much as it hurts and as much as it sucks, it's, I don't know, man. And like I said, we see some instant success, transfer portal and some other things, and but not for us. Did you really think that was going to happen for us? How long have you been a Miami fan? Did you really think that was going to happen for us? Some instant success? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yo, honestly, even though we, we hung early, uh, North Carolina handled business in this one, man. I mean, I, like I said, I just I don't even know. I don't know where the explosive run game is. I don't know who that guy is on our team. I don't Putting Emory in there is not the solution because... We've been here. We've played the QB hokey pokey. Putting Jakari in there is not the solution. Uh, I, I don't know. I think. You, you want to know what I honestly think? You want me to be real for a second? We're not, we've not even been talking about the North Carolina game. I'm not even breaking it down. This is the team that we are. And we're going to have to ride it out. And we're going to hopefully continue to get better. Because we, we have seen some improvement. I, look, 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 look. You don't want to hear it. And I know. I know. This team that that played North Carolina played them better than what last year's team would have played them. Last year's team would have lost by three or four touchdowns. It's just facts. There are definitely areas we can look at where there is some improvement. There is. Now Coop's spinning. Now Coop's being a homer. I'm so confused. Coop, figure out where you want to be. No, I've been in the same spot since August, since before we played it down. We don't want to be patient. We're tired of waiting. But unfortunately, we're not lucky enough to have that instant success. We're just not. We're going to have to grind. We're going to have to work for it. We're going to have to put up with the 5 and 7 and then 7 and 5 and make it as slow, you know, and we're not ready for that. It's tough. It's not fun. It's, it's still not fun. I can't stand this guy, man. I, I can't stand this guy. Honestly, he's probably hitting the retirement home after this season, so he'll go down as the coach that never lost to Miami. Four turnovers, man. Two picks, two fumbles. Tough to win a football game that way. I mean, what else can I say? 
Drake May, 17 of 33, 273 and four touchdowns is nothing absolutely out of this world amazing. But like I've already said, it's enough to get the job done, and they're consistently winning. Tez Walker, 132 yards on six receptions. We knew he was going to be, you know, a threat, but we don't have anybody that can cover him. Nobody on that field could match up with Tez Walker one-on-one. -on -one. He'd win it every time, every freaking time. And I'm happy that Restrepo had 11 catches for 96 yards and two touchdowns. That's awesome. But do we have some other? Jacoby George had six for 125. Yeah, Bouchard had three for 90. But here's the other thing. People said, Coop, well, why didn't we come out, you know, playing in the third like we did in the fourth? We put up 14 points. What happened? Once you get down, you get to play this little thing called hero ball, and you can take some big chances, and you can go extra tempo because you have to hurry up because you're losing. And it looks a lot different. I don't think we could maintain that and play that in that way for four quarters. We would make too many mistakes. We're not disciplined enough. We had a lot of penalties anyways also on top of it. We wouldn't be able to play that style for four quarters. We, 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 we wouldn't be able to do it. Miami's 4-2, and 0-2 oh in the ACC. I never expected a conference championship. Never. Never, never, never didn't expect an appearance in the, the ACC championship this year. It's just people got a little too excited and, and, and bought the hype. And now, welcome to reality. Here we are. This is who we are. And we just have to hope and pray that we can, can see some progress and we can try to keep getting a little bit better each week. But it still stinks. It still freaking sucks, bro. Um, I, I don't even have anything else to say. I just I know that what's going to be really, really frustrating is the fact that they've been pushing so hard for extra fan support. You know, on the financial side, buy the tickets, pack the rock, show these guys you support them. And when Miami keeps consistently being inconsistent and, and, and we keep losing games, that support is going to disappear, I can promise you. that The Clemson game, I'm still going. I'll be there. But I, I, Hard Rock's going to be at, at, at 15 to 20% capacity. There'll probably be more Clemson fans there than Miami fans. It's just the reality. So it's a tough sell when the product is still doo-doo. And in today's times, I don't know how 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 much longer you can can continue to expect people to stick around. I'm not going anywhere. It's always all about the you. But it still sucks, and I still just don't really know what else to say, man. I don't really know what else to say. Uh, I know that uh, I know this man's going to be feeling the pressure. He's not going anywhere, but I mean he's going to be feeling the pressure from fans. I can promise you that. Tyler Van Dyke is definitely not a popular guy right now. I can promise you that. And I don't blame people for being on one extreme or the other. I don't blame anybody for anything. I, I don't like I said. I don't blame you for buying the hype. I don't blame you for getting getting pissed at me when I predict these because you don't want that to be the case. I get it. Oh, Coop, you predicted a loss, and that's why they lost. Okay, did you predict a win against Georgia Tech? Yeah, Coop, like ninety nine percent of everyone else did. Okay, well that's why we lost. Yeah, what are you? Stop making excuses. Stop. I'm going to eat my freaking fresh baked chocolate chip cookies. I'm going to go to bed.